<clears throat> Calling in all Osu gamers. I don't know why I did that, but I really felt like it was necessary. I'm about to go through some things in this video that probably too many Osu players neglect. And that's not just the in-game settings. It is also some settings and programs that lie outside of the game, in the desktop or in the background. If you want your OSU client to run the absolute best it can, I highly recommend watching this video to the very end. Just a quick disclaimer before we actually get into the main sauce. These optimizations are very basic for the sake of keeping everything in this video fast and easy. If you don't mind spending more time uh, getting into more specific tweaks and optimizations, I will be making another video after this one um, that will go into those things. So if you don't mind, please do subscribe um, and stay notified as I will not let you down. Oh, and if you don't mind, uh, hitting that like button uh, would be appreciated. Um, it will send a positive message to me personally um, telling me that you do want to see that video made and it will do wonders in encouraging me to actually make that video so please do like the video and subscribe like i already said that but just do it nothing's stopping you and with that out of the way let's get into it all right so what we're gonna do is we're going to get onto our desktop and look for the osu icon we want to make changes to our osu properties so right click and click on properties now if you can't find the osu icon on your desktop what you can usually do is go to your taskbar if you decided to pin it to your taskbar and right click there however as you can see i am unable to right click on osu itself and click on properties so what we'll need to do is we'll need to open up osu and open the file that the osu.exe is located in so we can do that by going to options and open osu folder and all we need to do is just click on the osu.exe and right click and click on properties and boom we got it now what we need to do is click on compatibility and check the disable full screens optimizations i i, I think sans wanted to tell me something there i think what he wanted to tell me was we also want to go into change high dpi settings and check this right here, override high DPI scaling behavior, scaling performed by application. We want to be set to application so that when we go into our OSU settings, our mouse DPI scaling behavior will be controlled by OSU itself. So that is very important that we check that. And now that we have checked those two things, just click on apply and okay. If you see me looking over to my second monitor, I have some notes open, so I'm just using that to help me out. So now what we need to do is we need to go into our in-game settings in our OSU client and go to our options. And now I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of all of my settings. And I've made sure to make these settings be the settings that you want for the absolute best case scenario when playing the game, which would be lowest latency, highest performance. We have our language, English. This is just preference here using an alternative font for chat display. Release stream is choosing which version of OZ you want to run. So there's stable, which is the most stable option. There's the beta option. And then there's cutting edge, which is experimental and gets the most updates most of the time. So for me, I prefer to run on cutting edge as I get less stutters in the game while running on cutting edge. This is something that you'll need to play around with yourself and see which one you'll have the best performance on. I wouldn't go with beta, I would go between stable or cutting edge. Now we have the renderer under graphics and we want to have our frame limiter set to unlimited. Now Pepe actually recommends optimal as our frame limiter. As you can see that caps our frame rate at a certain value and personally I find that I get more stutters when it's set to optimal. And on top of that, I get more latency. The way I can tell that I have more latency is that when I go from unlimited to optimal and I try and play any map that's like OD9 or OD10, I would find that I'm tapping too late when I'm on optimal versus unlimited. And that usually means that there's more latency because you're used to being able to tap later than it's kind of hard to explain, but just know that if you make any changes and you're tapping too early, that means your latency has improved. If you're tapping too late after making some changes with your OSU client, your latency has gotten worse. So with that out of the way, you can show your FPS counter if you want. I prefer to have that off. Compatibility mode, reduce drop frames. These two settings can help if you're running on a potato machine, <laughs> like a really old laptop or something like that. I'm running on a desktop with some pretty decent parts, so I don't need to have those turned on. The tech performance issues, I have this turned off. I 
believe that the more processes you have running on your system, the more opportunities for added latency there are. So I have this turned off. So normally you'll be at full resolution here, but as you can see, there are some black borders around my game and that's not what you would normally have. It would normally look like this at 1080p or if you have a different resolution monitor like 1440p or 4K, you would have your game at full screen like this. So the reason why I have it set to a lower resolution is because just to cut it short, I just have a preference here. I just prefer it to be like this, just a little smaller. What's important here though is you want to have full screen mode and render at native resolution checked. If you don't have these two checked, you'll have more latency. Full screen mode, as you can see, it just says right there, decreases cursor latency in Windows 7 Plus. Basically, it isolates OSU so that your computer is focusing on only displaying OSU on this monitor. If you have multiple monitors, it won't mess with the other monitor. It will just affect the monitor OSU is being displayed on. Render at native resolution is more for where, in my case, like you'll be running at a custom resolution. It just centers the screen and also does improve the latency. You can also mess around with this to move around where the OSU window is on your screen. So like if I move this a little bit to the left, it, you can see that it shifts to the left, but I prefer to have it in the center. If you want, you can move it around. I don't, and that's completely fine. So now for detail settings, I have snaking sliders turned on, background video. Now you can have this turned off. Generally, if you want to have the best performance while playing OSU, regardless of what kind of PC you're running on, you want to have background video and storyboards turned off. For me, I sometimes play with the background video just for fun or with the storyboard just for fun because sometimes, you know, having something going on in the background, like it's a change. And sometimes you need something different while you play OSU to have some fun. So that's why I have those two turned on. Um, while you're playing a map, you can actually manually turn those off on a beat map by beat map basis. I can actually go into a song here and just right here you can disable storyboard ignore beatmap skin ignore beatmap hit sound and disable video so you can do that but I'm um, going back to our options here combo burst you want this turned off this is where like if you if your skin has the files for it an image will pop in from the left or the right like every time you reach a certain combo it can be very distracting while we play and also it is an added layer of something that's going on that you don't need to have going on that your computer needs to render and you want to keep that to a minimum level next we have our shaders i just have this turned off it's probably preference if you want this turned on or not same thing with softening filter screenshot format png if you want the highest quality jpeg if you want to be able to upload the the image to your browser you can do that by pressing shift plus f12 snow it's just whatever your skin has, it'll add that. I personally have that turned off. Parallax is where the background will move around as you move your cursor. I prefer to have that turned on. Some people prefer to have it turned off, but that's just preference. Menu tips is, well, menu tips, I have that turned off. Interface voices, uh, that's the welcome to us or see you later, something like that. As you heard already though, I have it set to the no meme. <laughs> and Osu music theme, it'll play the main theme song when you first open up Osu. I mean, you gotta have that turned on, right? Seasonal background sometimes, I have it set to sometimes. Um, you can have it set to always, or Whenever. depends on what you prefer uh, show thumbnails is just where it'll show the thumbnail of the actual uh, map that you have selected um, so if I turn that off it's gone you can enable that or disable that depending on what you prefer again a lot of this is preference so background dim you want this at 100% unless if you're playing with a video or storyboard then I just prefer to have it set to 92 or somewhere between 90 and 95 I feel that if it's any lower then it's too bright and distracting from the gameplay don't change dim levels during breaks I prefer to have that set to don't change dim levels that's just personal preference I feel that it's less distracting and just helps keep me focused in the game progress display I have it set to top right pie in my skin specifically the skin actually makes it centered at the top so yeah if you want you can have it at the bar or at the bottom Bottom, you can just play around with it. Hit error. Okay, so by default, it'll be set to color, although this light here is telling me that it'll be set to hit error by default. Well, either way, you want it to be set to hit error because that will show you how your tapping is timed. Um, more specifically, it'll show you if you're tapping too early or too late. For me, I personally prefer to have the key overlay turned on on the right side here. Show approach circle on first hidden object. A lot of people prefer to have it turned off. It's preference. I don't play Mania, so I just have these turned off. As for audio, you typically want it to be set to whatever audio your headphones are connected to or your speakers if you play with speakers. Generally speaking though, if you want the best latency, I highly recommend going with headphones or earphones plugged directly into the motherboard in the back of your computer. That's the ideal setup you want to have. If you plug in your headphones to the front IO port on your desktop computer, in your case, there will be some latency there. Audio compatibility mode. Now, there was an update with Osu where they changed the audio engine in game and there was a mixed response to that, mainly because it wasn't optimized at first. It might be fixed now, but I personally found that my latency is actually better with it turned on, even though you can clearly see that it says if you have this turned on, 
you will have higher latency. But I personally find that I have lower latency if it's turned on. So again, this will be a case by case basis. You'll have to test it out on your own, but it's not that hard to figure out. Master volume, I personally have my music and effect set to 95 and 97 respectively. This is just preference. Some people prefer to have their music higher than their effects, especially if your skin has really loud hit sounds, then you can balance that out with this slider right here. Ignore beat map skin sounds. I just have this turned on, but uh, if you like play some fancy maps with some special hit sounds, you might want to have this turned off. Universal offset, set this to zero. As for our skin, again, here's my skin. I'll include a link in the description for my skin. I have this turned on um, mainly because I just want to play with my skin. I don't want to play with beatmap specific skin. And typically newer beatmaps don't have skins that they specifically have, but I just have this turned on anyways. Use skin sound samples. This is, oh, okay. So when I click with it turned off, it's just the normal sound effect. But if I turn it on, it's sans talking and sans talking is what I have my typing set to. So I guess I learned something new today and I can actually turn this off. So I don't have Sans talking to me whenever I click on Osu. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right. So I don't play Taiko, so I just have that turned off. Always use skin cursor. Definitely have that turned on if you want to play with your skin cursor. Cursor size. I'm probably triggering a lot of you right now, but I used to have my skin cursor set to point, I think, six, nine. Nice. <laughs> uh, but uh, I slowly increased it and I find that I play better with it at basically one time, but I, I, I don't know why. I just have it at point nine, nine. I would say personal preference, but really, I don't have a good reason for that. So... <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Use combo color as tint for slider ball. That's just personal preference with how the game looks aesthetically while you're playing. Automatic cursor size. I prefer to have that turned off. Now sensitivity. Generally, you want to have this set to one times for the most accurate one-to-one -one movement. Raw input is something you would want to have turned on when playing with mouse. I don't have it turned on because I play with tablet most of the time anyways. I do turn this on when I play with mouse though. Map absolute raw input to Osu window is for tablets. It won't do anything if you play with mouse. Have this turned on if you have an issue with your tablet having your cursor stuck in the top left corner. Typically the setting will fix that. Confine mouse cursor only when full screen. I just have that turned on. Disable mouse wheel and play mode. This is more for these two options actually. Disable mouse buttons and mouse wheel. This is typically for mouse players but the second one right here is actually really good for tablet players. If you don't want to have your pen tapping the surface register as a mouse click while playing you want to have this disabled. If you're playing with TabX playing style, then you would turn this off, but we have that turned on so we can drag. It won't affect you if you hover on tablet, but I drag, so I have this turned on. Cursor ripples, it'll show a ripple whenever you click with your mouse or tap in game with Z and X or whatever keyboard bindings you have, which you can change right here. I just have mine set to the default. You can go in and change these to whatever fits best for you. Osu Mania layout, pretty self-explanatory. Editor, you don't really need to mess with these unless if you're mapping, then feel free to set these to your preference. Online, alerts and privacy. It's just whatever you prefer, really. Show spectators, you can disable this. If you find having the spectators popping up while you're playing, having that pop up distracts you, you can turn that off right here. Discord rich presence, you can have that turned on. So Discord will recognize that you're playing with Osu when you're playing Osu. Automatically start Osu Direct downloads. Whenever you go into your browser and click Osu Direct in the beatmap page, it will automatically download versus giving you a prompt as to whether you want to download it or view the beatmap listing or the forum listing, any of that. You can prefer no video downloads, so it'll automatically just download without the video. And uh, yeah, uh, that's basically it for our OSU settings. What we want to do next is we want to open our OSU folder. So I actually have an OSU shortcut folder that I made right here. So I'm just going to click on that. If you need to get to your OSU folder, just open your OSU game go to your settings and it should be right there. Just open Osu folder. So what we're going to do is we're going to check and see if our skin hit sounds are having any delay or not. So we're going to go into, there we go, skins and all right. So you can just search for drum. You want to change the hit normals for drum, soft hit normal and normal hit normal. And the way you're going to do that is we are going to go to our browser and we're going to search for a program called Audacity and it should be the first link. Just go ahead and download that. I already have it downloaded, so I don't need to do that. And we will right click on normal hit normal or whatever hit normal file you have. And we will open with Audacity and let that open up. So I found a hit sound audio file that has delay. As you can see, the wavelength here starts flat or reduced. And what you want to do is you want to, well, first of all, it'll look like something like this uh, when you first open the program. Um, just press and hold control and scroll up to zoom into the beginning of the wavelength. And what you want to do is you want to click and hold and highlight the beginning starting from where the sound file 
shows that the wavelength is peaking and you want to just delete. Just press delete on your keyboard and I believe backspace will also work. And now we fixed our hit sound. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to file, save other. And here you want to check and see what file type your hit sound is. Typically it will be a .wav file. So save other, export as wave. And here you want to be careful. I've made this mistake many times. You want to make sure that where you're saving it is the skin that you want to save it in. So we're saving this hit sound in Kitty Cat V. 1.3. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to skins and we're going to find kitty cat version 1.3. I may have, yes, there it is. All right. And then we save and this should pop up. It's just completely fine. We're overriding the hit sound file to have no latency. So yes. And this doesn't matter. Just press okay. And there we go. So we close the project and then we reopen this just to confirm whether the changes we made have been saved. You can see right here, we have effectively gotten rid of that audio delay in our hit sound. All right. So you just want to do that with all of the hit normal sounds in your skin. It should be normal, hit normal, drum hit normal, and soft hit normal. I don't believe there's any other hit normals. All right. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, now we're going to go into our NVIDIA control panel. This is only for people who have a computer or laptop that has an NVIDIA dedicated graphics card installed. If you do not have have an NVIDIA graphics card install, like let's say you have an AMD card or Intel integrated graphics, and you can skip this part. So we're going to go into our NVIDIA control panel here. And what we are going to do is we're going to change our global and application 3D settings. So what we want to do is we want to click here and we want to click here and move the slider all the way down to performance and then click apply. But I've already done this before, so I don't need to do that. Now we're going to go to manage 3D settings. And here is where we will be making optimizations that will actually make a difference in what you feel in the game. It will improve your frame rate. It will decrease latency to a certain degree. Some people are more sensitive than others. I have been pretty sensitive in the past, I think. So you may or may not feel the difference, but the difference will be there. And that's what matters, whether the difference is actually there or not. In a future video, which I alluded to earlier, we will be going into more changes that will be latency oriented. And it's not about how little each change affects the latency. It's more about stacking the changes on top of each other so that the overall latency is reduced. <clears throat> so we want to basically have these settings match what I have here. Image sharpening turned off, scaling disabled, ambient occlusion turned off, anisotropic filtering turned off, all anti-aliasing turned off, background application max frame rate turned off, CUDA GPUs, you want this to be turned on, just select your GPU and click OK. DSR factors turned off, low latency mode. In general, you just want this turned on. I believe it doesn't affect OpenGL. I might be wrong about that. Whatever type of program OSU is, it doesn't affect OSU specifically. It may affect OSU laser. I'm not sure about that. For other games, you want this turned on. So just have that turned on in global settings. Do not set this to ultra. Ultra only makes a difference when you have your GPU load at the absolute max, 100%. So you just want this to set to turn on and we have our max frame rate. You do not want to cap your frame rate. I have this set to turned off just so that OSU is being displayed at the max frame rate that my computer can display it at. Multi-frame sampling, turn that off. OpenGL, a rendering GPU, we want that to be our GTX 1070. Power management mode, this is a big one. You want this set to prefer maximum performance. Typically, it'll be set to optimal power. As for preferred re refresh rate, have this set to highest available. It will show your monitor name right there. Shader cache, have that set to turn on. Texture filtering on, anisotropic sample, you want that turned on. Negative LOD bias, allow. Texturing filtering quality, you want this set to high performance. Texture filtering trilinear optimization, turned on. Credit optimization, you definitely want this turned on. Triple buffering, turned off. Vertical sync, don't play with vertical sync. It adds a ton of latency. Have that turned off. Virtual reality pre-rendered frames. I know OSU is in a virtual reality game, but typically you want pre-rendered frames set to one in any game for the best latency. So now that we have that uh, all set, click apply. Let it do its thing. It'll flash. That's normal. Now we want to go to program settings. Now, when you set these global settings, sometimes it won't apply to everything you play on your computer. So to be sure that the settings that we're applying to our OSU specifically actually get applied, we are going to do this on an application basis. Your OSU will not show up here if you're doing this for the first time. So what we need to do is we need to click add and browse. And then you just want to find your OSU game. Typically it's under app data, local OSU, and then click on the OSU exe and then click open then add selected program. We already have it added here, so I'm not going to do that. And you just want to copy these settings. Most of them are the same. Usually they'll say use global setting. This is just a me thing. I just prefer to have it manually set for each and every option. So I'm just going to go through here slowly and you can copy these settings. It's mostly or pretty much all the same, but you just want to make sure that you have it set to these options for the application itself. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, I'm just going to quickly run through the rest of the NVIDIA control panel. Physics settings, set that to your GPU. 
change resolution. If you have a display that is above 60 hertz and can display like 144 or 165 or 240, or if you have the money and you bought it a 360 hertz monitor, this is where you want to actually apply the setting that enables that higher refresh rate. When you first plug in your monitor, it will default to 60 hertz. It will not automatically apply that higher refresh rate. So typically you just want to go down to PC, the PC tab right here, and then it'll give you the option to set your refresh rate. My monitor is 144 hertz by default, but I have a custom resolution set here where I've actually overclocked my monitor to 176 hertz just to squeeze out that extra performance. If you want a tutorial on how to overclock your monitor, feel free to let me know in the comments. So after setting your monitor's refresh rate, you want to click apply and this will pop up. Just click yes. And you should notice that things are a lot more smoother, especially if you had it set to 60 hertz before. Along with that higher refresh rate, there will be a lower, lower latency. So very important. A lot of people do not know about this and they have their monitor set to 60 hertz and they think that it's 144 hertz, but it's not. And they like can go up to as like just playing games with the monitor for multiple years before finding out that they were playing at 60 hertz the entire time and not playing at that high refresh rate that they paid for. So very important right there. So by default, it'll be using default color settings. You want to have it set to use NVIDIA color settings, highest 32 bit. This right here will depend on what monitor you're using. My monitor can only display six bit color depth and that's completely fine. Uh, what's important here though, is that you want to have output dynamic range set to full. If you have it set to limited, your colors won't be as good. RGB is what you want for your output color format. And we're just going to click apply. All right, now we're going to go to adjust desktop color settings and this is where you can actually change your gamma. <laughs> this is where OSU players go to change their gamma. Uh, and this is where you can change the orientation of your display. This isn't really anything. I don't really know what this means, but it's there. Adjust desktop size and precision. If possible, you want perform scaling to be set to display. So on my secondary monitor, you can choose between display and GPU. Unfortunately, on my primary monitor, I can only set it to GPU. Having perform scaling on set to display will reduce latency. And you don't need to touch these as we have already gone through here. So now that we've gone through that, this is where you can change the alignment. Adjust video color settings. All right, so this is another area where you can change gamma. You want to have it set to with the NVIDIA settings and you want to go to advanced and click on full for that dynamic range. Adjust video image settings. I have these settings set. It's probably preference uh, if you want to have the interlacing turned on or off. I don't really want to mess with these noise reduction or edge enhancement. I think the way things look on my monitor is what I want. So that is what we got for the NVIDIA control panel. Now we're going to go into a program. The link to this will be in the description. It's called 10 Apps Manager for Windows 10. Windows 10 unfortunately comes with a lot of extra applications that you don't use really. I mean, most people don't use them and this allows you to actually remove them. So like get Skype get office, solitaire, phone companion, Microsoft Wi-Fi, messaging and Skype, phone, like who used their computer as a phone, sports. Sorry about that. My microphone disconnected somehow, but we're back. I believe I was talking about how you can choose to uninstall what you want. So you don't have to remove everything. You can just pick and choose what you want to remove. So the download link is right here. Be sure not to click any ads that are disguised as download buttons. The download link is right here. I already downloaded it and unzip the file. All right. So now that you have unzipped the file, let's go ahead and open the program. There's a readme text. Feel free to read through this. What we're going to do now is we're going to right click 10appsmanager.exe, run as administrator, and you should see this. And what you can do is you can go ahead and choose whatever you want to uninstall. Some of these programs do run in the background and we all know that background applications can add latency. So go ahead and choose whatever you want to uninstall. No one uses the Microsoft Store for anything, so you can go ahead and uninstall that. I've already gone through and uninstalled what I wanted to uninstall. If you have anything you want to uninstall, go ahead and uninstall it. If you don't see anything you think you want to keep, then there's a one click does all button right here in the lower right. You can remove all applications at once. And once that's done, I would recommend restarting your computer. And after you do that, we can move on to the next thing. So looking at my notes here, we want to go through our window settings. We want to optimize our windows to allow our OC to perform at its maximum potential. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with display. We want to have our scaling set to 100%, especially if your display resolution is 1080p. If you have, let's say, a 4K monitor, you might need to have this set to something else. In a future video, I'll be going over a program that will basically get rid of any weird display scaling mouse related movement because that's what happens when you change it from 100%. What happens is your mouse movement may not be truly one-to-one. -one. So I will be going over a program 
program that you can use to fix that and to also test and see if your mouse movement is truly one-to-one -one or if there's some sensitivity issues going on. And now you want to go to sound, make sure this is whatever sound device you're using. Typically, if you're having your headphones plugged in the ideal way, which is in the back of the motherboard, it will say speakers instead of headphones. And you can change your master volume. Here's your microphone. Now what we want to do real quick is go to sound control panel in here. Typically, it will look like this. Um, it'll show a bunch of extra devices that you're not using. I recommend going through each and every one of them. It'll look like this. You just want to right click on it, disable it, and then right click and uncheck show disabled devices. It's just much cleaner. If you ever need to go into your sound device properties to change anything, then you'll have an easier time doing that. So speaking of which, go to your default device and click on properties, go to enhancements and uncheck everything and check disable all enhancement. Now that is the ideal thing you want to do for the best latency. You don't want these extra processes to be stacked on top of each other, adding time between when the sound is activated and when you actually hear it. You want to have these disabled. The reason why I don't have disable all enhancements checked is because I use a program called Peace. It's basically a system equalizer that allows you to change basically how your headphones sound to what you like. And the reason why I use this is because you can set the delay millisecond to zero. And I believe CSGO players actually use this uh, to help them hear footsteps easier when they're playing. And they use this program because it is the lowest latency equalizer there is out there. So I will have a link to this in the description if you're interested in using this. And if you do want to use this, then make sure you have this unchecked, but have everything else in here unchecked as well. Advanced, you want this set to the highest bit rate possible. This will be important for a program we'll be installing shortly. I believe on older devices, you might want to have it set to the lowest bit rate, but we're talking like really old hardware. Most of the time you want this to be set to the highest bit rate. Spatial sound, you want this set to turn off. If you have Dolby, don't use it. It'll add latency because it's an extra process the audio has to go through before reaching your ears. If you do want to have Dolby Atmos or whatever it is, to turn it off while you're playing Osu and then turn it on when you're consuming content on YouTube or in a video player. Now we're going to go to recording, microphone, properties, levels. Sometimes when you get a new microphone, it'll be set to a lower level and it'll be really quiet out of the box and you'll have to go through like your discord and increase the gain or something. Here you want to have it set to the maximum and then you can adjust the gain levels in your third party software. Go through advanced, set this to the highest for maximum quality and then click OK. And with that, we're done with the sound control panel. And now onto notifications. Turn off notifications. I believe sometimes you'll get this pop up on Windows 10. Like if Chrome has a notification for you, it'll pop up in the lower right. And I believe Sometimes that can actually alt tab you out of the OSU client while you're playing a map. And if you want that to not happen, turn off notifications completely right here. And now there's a YouTube channel called Freethy. This is where I'm getting most of my information from. He's a really chill guy, really helpful, goes into a lot more detail than I will be going into. But in his videos, he recommends having notifications turned off. You don't want that to be running in the background. So that's what he says. He's like the latency guru on YouTube. So focus assist. You want this turned off. Basically what this does is that it saves notifications if you miss them somehow have it turned off. I believe there's an issue with the OSU game stuttering and focus assist being turned on. So I would highly recommend turning off of focus assist. Power and sleep. We want to click on additional power settings. It'll bring us to the control panel. Now right here I have a power plan called Bitsum Highest Performance. This is again from Freethy. I'll be going over this in a future video on how to set this up, but what everyone should have is high performance. And what you want to do is you want to change plan settings and you never want your computer to sleep unless if it's a laptop and turn off the display. This is just personal preference. What we want to do is we want to click on change advanced power settings. You want it to have it match these settings. So I'll go ahead and open all of these. So turn off hard disk, set that to never. Desktop background settings, slideshow, pause, wireless adapter settings, power saving mode, set that to maximum performance. Sleep, sleep after, never. Allow wake timers, disable. USB settings, USB selective suspend setting, disable. Power buttons and lid, power button action, shut down. Sleep button action, sleep. PCI express, link state, power management, set it to off. Processor power management, processor state, set that to 100%. System cooling policy, set that to active. Maximum processor state, set that to 100%. Turn off display after 15 minutes. When sharing media, prevent idle link to sleep. Video playback quality bias, video playback performance bias. When playing video, optimize video quality. Now, not sure if I said this, but I'll say it again. You might not see some of these things. In my next video on this topic, I'll go into how to have your system display these hidden options. But for now, what you do have, make sure it matches these settings and then click apply and OK. Then set your computer to run on high performance. Now with that out of the way, go to storage. Storage sense, you want this to be turned off. You want full control of your system. If you ever need to get rid of temporary files, just Google, how do I get rid of temporary files on my system to free up space? Usually it's in a temp folder somewhere in your file directory. Not that hard to find. You can just get rid of it manually instead of this doing it in the background as a background process that's constantly running and scanning for temporary files you don't need. Tablet mode. If you're on a desktop, use desktop mode and don't ask me and don't switch. Turn these off. If you're using a two-in-one laptop or something along those lines, then maybe you want to have something different here. But if you're on a desktop, 
There's no reason not to have it set this way. Multitasking. I prefer to have this set off. Snap Windows is basically just where it does this, but I just prefer to have that turned off. It's just personal preference. So su suggestions in your timeline, turn that off. Virtual desktops, only the desktop I'm using. Protecting to this PC, just have it turned off. Shared experiences, just turn it off. Clipboard, clipboard history. This is pretty handy. If you press the Windows key and V, you're able to see your clipboard history, which shows whatever you've copied and pasted in the past. I'm not sure why I don't have this enabled or why I can't have this enabled, but I don't know. I own this computer, so it's kind of weird how it says that. We'll just move on. Remote desktop. If it doesn't support it, don't worry about it. And then about, you don't need to do anything here. Now for devices, mouse. Now here's something important. We want to go to additional mouse options, and this is a big one. Not everyone does this, so I'll go over this. You want this to be set to the sixth point out of 11 points. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That is where you'll get the true one-to-one -one movement. You want to have enhanced pointer precision turned off. That will get rid of any acceleration on your mouse cursor. So go ahead and click apply and then okay. And this is just personal preference. Phone. As you can see, if you follow this guide in the order that it is laid out, there should be nothing here because we got rid of the phone. Network and internet. Highly recommend connecting your computer via ethernet whenever possible. You'll have a more stable connection. Personalization. Your theme, your colors. Choose your color. Dark, custom. I have my set to dark. Light, I believe is the light theme. Ah, oh, my eyes. Ah, oh, please fix it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, there we go. I prefer to have it on the dark theme. This is where you can change it to be the dark theme. And next is apps, startup apps. This is one of the places you can change your startup apps. Disabling the higher impact programs here will reduce the amount of time it takes for your system to start up from when you turn on the PC physically to when you're in Windows. The other place you can access that is in Task Manager and go to Startup and it's all here, much more condensed and it's what I prefer. It even shows you how long it takes for it to process all of this. Gaming. This one's a big one. Disable game bar. It is an extra process that runs constantly in the background. You do not want that to run while you're playing Osu. Captures. Record in the background. Turn that off. Record audio. Turn that off. Nothing else should matter because we have these settings turned off. Game mode. Happy recommends that you have this set to on. However, your mileage may vary with this. I personally have it set to turn off because my computer is on the higher end. If your computer is on the lower end, you might want to have this turned on just so your computer optimizes your windows for Osu. Typically with higher end systems, you won't have much of a difference if you have this enabled. So I have it turned off. Privacy. Here's a big one. You want to disable all of these. Disable that, disable that, and disable what you can because basically what your computer is doing is in the background, it's sending information to Microsoft and that is a process that adds an extra layer and you don't want that. You want the least amount of background processes possible running so that your hardware resources can be focused on OSU. Location, set all of these to off. For this though, allow apps to access your camera. This is important if you, let's say, want to record something with OBS. Allow desktop apps to access your camera. Same thing with microphone. Have this enabled. Notifications. We already disabled notifications notifications, so it shouldn't matter. App diagnostics, background apps, actually, you want this to be turned off. It's a no brainer. Don't have extra background apps running in the background. App diagnostics, you want this off, change, off, automatic file downloads. It's grayed out here, but you probably don't want this enabled. And the rest of these should be turned on. Update and security, disable this, allow downloads from other PCs for developers. Make sure you have sideload apps or developer mode. Either one is fine. Do not have this checked. You want to be able to download programs from the internet and not the microphone soft store. And that is it for our Windows 10 settings. Up next is actually the last thing that we'll be going over in this video. It is a program called Real. Basically what it does is it optimizes your Windows audio to have the lowest latency possible. So what you need to do is you need to download the .exe and then just run it and just have it running in the background. So just open it up and have it running. It should say 2.5 milliseconds. If it's higher, you want to make sure that your sample rate is set to the highest in the sound control panel that we opened earlier. So just have this running in the background while you're playing a game, any game really, not just Osu, and you'll have lower latency with your audio. Well, you've made it to the end of this video. As you can see, it is a completely different day from when we started. I did not expect it to take this long to edit this video, but we managed to actually take about one and a half hours of footage and trim it down all the way to 30 minutes. I wish it was shorter, but what can you do? I gotta send out this information somehow, right? Hopefully you found the information in this video useful. I mean, I sure hope so. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them down in the comments down below or pay a visit over at my Twitch. I stream on Tuesdays and Thursdays. The link will be in the description. Also feel free to share any optimizations you may have that I did not in this video. I may or may not borrow them in my next video, but that depends. Other than that though, I don't really have anything to say. Actually, I lied. I do have one more thing to say, and that is be sure to be subscribed and stay notified 
and hopefully I'll see you later. Happy clicking.